coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm the board game teacher. Thanks for coming to my games room. Today we're taking a look at Mancala by People Who Are Older Than Dirt. Now, just to be clear, People Who Are Older Than Dirt is not the name of the company that makes this game. This game is uh, a game that is rumored to be, believed to be, the oldest board game on Earth. And so I thought it would be something I'd like to take a look at and look at some of the qualities and educational benefits that this game might have. So let's get right to the report card. So looking at the report card from Mancala, I'm going to give the number of players a C. And that's because it's a two-player game. And so that's what we give two-player games here on this channel, a C. In looking at the learning from Mancala, I'm going to give it a C+. Uh, I give it a C+, because it doesn't really have anything sort of hardcore curricular that you can teach to uh, use it for, as a teaching tool for in the classroom. Uh, but what it does do is it teaches some skills like, you know, uh, critical thinking, strategizing, subitizing, which is the skill of looking at how many beads are in one, um, one sort of space here on the board and knowing how many are there without having to count them one by one. That's a skill known as subitizing, which can then lead to um, planning out your turns. Another thing which it can teach is the fine motor skills necessary to pick up the beads and then be dropping them off one by one as you go through the game, because that's what the game is. It's a very simple game, but you are picking up the beads in one container and dropping them off as you proceed around the board. And I mean, the game being a game of you know ancient history, I mean, it does lend itself somewhat to a little bit of study as to if you want to look at it in a social study sense, but uh, it's not like the game is going to be teaching any social studies. It's just more of a segue, a lead in into that kind of topic. For fun, I'm going to give the game a B-. Um, I think the game is fine. I think it's a decent game. Yeah, I think some people are going to love it, and some people are going to think it's too boring. Uh, so that's why I sort of give it more the B-, minus because I think it's, to me personally, it's more on the, the side of, like, I think there's more exciting, more fun games out there than this. For time, I'm going to give the game an A. Uh, the game is super quick to set up, super, super quick to clean up, and it plays in about 20 minutes. So it's a very fast game, which can be played, um, you know, maybe as two students are finished up early in the class, they can pull up the Mancala board and start playing, uh, certainly during indoor recesses or something. As I said, it's not something I would be teaching as in the classroom to be pulling up the Mancala to help reinforce certain skills, but it's, it's a good one to have around, and I think it's one that I'm going to certainly enjoy having in my class. For cost, I'm going to give the game an A+. And I give it not the A+, because I found this one in, uh, you see, the, 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 the thrift store I found it in here, it was like for $2.00. Uh, if you find it, I'm sure you're going to be able to find it for cheap, but because it is such a simple game, it lends itself well to um, making it yourself. I mean, you can really just play this with, uh, like, drawing the board with a stick in the mud and then using stones. I mean, that's how easy it is. But you could also, you know, make this part of an art lesson in conjunction with if you're doing the social studies thing, and the students could make their own, you know, get some colored beads or rocks, you can paint them, you use egg cartons for the for the Mancala board. There's all kinds of different things you could be doing with this in a more creative fashion uh, to make your own. I mean, it is a very simple game and requires really no need to go out and buy one when you can just make your own. So once you know about Mancala and look a little into it, you can make your own board. Well, let's take this to the table and I'll show you how it's played. So here we are set up for a game of Mancala. You see in every one of these little bowls, um, parts of the board, there is four of these colored stones. That it doesn't need to, the colors don't matter. There's no significance behind their colors. I just put in four randomly to each one. Uh, the colors don't mean anything to the game. They just make it more attractive. So as you're playing, uh, I, you sit across from each other in this way. Now what's important to note though is that here, what is on the left of the screen, which is my right, is my side of the board. And my opponent across from me, sitting across from me on this side, this will be their side of the board. So that's going to be important to the game. Now what you do in the game is you're going to pick up, you're going to choose one of the bowls, and you're going to put, so if I choose this bowl here, I take these up, you're always going around to your right. So it's always going to go in a counterclockwise direction. So even my opponent will be to their right. And so then you take up all the gems in the thing and you drop one off in each location. So I've ended here. 
This is the space where I will be collecting the gems that I score. So by putting one gem in here, I've now scored one point. Now also when you end in this space here with the last gem placed, then you are able to take another turn. So now I would maybe do something like um, take up these five and I can go one, two, three, four, five. Now I placed another gem in here, but it wasn't the last one. The last gem was up here. So that's going to be the end of my turn. So now my opponent would take a turn and they would probably want to do much the same. So they would go take these ones and go one, two, three, four, five, and they've ended there and then they might go again. Now, let's just say for argument's sake that they took this one, okay? They would go one, two, they do not put into my zone. This is my zone, they only put them in their zone. They're not gonna give you any points. Then three, four, five, they would end there. And then on my turn, I'm going to pick one and I'm going to go. Now, so the one way to score points, as I've shown, is to be dropping off things in the end bowls here, the longer ones. The other way to score, and this is the way to score more points, is if you put your last gem into a space that is empty, you get what is ever across from it on the opposite side of the board. Now, what's important is it has to be on your side of the board. So if I were to do it here, this is my opponent's half of the board, so I would get nothing if it's here, but I could uh, if I score here. Now I might want to put something there just to prevent my opponent from getting those points, but there's quite a few points in here, so I may look to get something like that. So that would be um, one, two, three, four, so five, five, so this one, one, two, three, four, yes. So if I take this one, I could, oh, I could go one, two, three, four, and five. So now by ending in this space, the space was empty before, by ending here, I now go to the space opposite it, and I take all of the gems there into my space here. Now, play of the game continues until one person ends the game by having their half of the board being empty. So let's just say the board looks something like this. So if the board got to this stage and I just simply take up one more gem, I put it into my space, then my opponent, the game is over. Now we look at where the halves are, the opponent, my opponent would get all the gems that are left over on their half of the board. At that time, you count up all the gems in each player's spaces and whoever has the most gems wins the game. And that's how you play Mancala. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of Kicking It Old School. If you have any questions about Mancala or have any stories of your experiences using it in the classroom that you might like to share, please do so in the comments section below. Uh, and if you have any ideas for other games you might like to see, particularly anything that you might like to see on Kicking It Old School, some of those older games, again, leave a message in the comments section below. Before you go, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Craig Thompson Wood, the board game teacher, saying thanks for coming to the classroom. Coming back to school with me